every day, one by one, I'm gonna try every recipe of Laura, starting from the very beginning. Come, join me on my challenge. Let's go. Hi everyone, my name is Ruth and welcome to the 178th day of my challenge where I feel actually this light is kind of making me sleepy. I want to close my eyes. But anyways, today I feel like I will love this recipe just because I feel like this is one of those recipes where you kind of will impress everyone big time because I'm going to cook a feast. There's really no other way to say about this recipe. So I'm gonna try apricot glazed pork tenderloin. I mean, even the name screams fanciness. And I feel this recipe will be also pretty exotic. I mean, it is to me because I'm usually not in places where there's pork. So buying a huge piece of pork is already in itself like, Ooh, something different, something new, so exciting! And also it was really really fun when I went on the hunt for celery root, which this name is like the first time <clears throat> and my voice is running away. Don't run away, come back. <laughs> so this is the first time I've even heard of such a thing, so it's really exciting to try something you Really, they didn't even know that exists. So I'm really, really curious about that though. I am a bit, I don't know, not nervous, but like anxious maybe? Not anxious, that's too strong of a word. Well, let's call it just interested because I'm not a big fan of celery in general and this is celery root, so. I don't know, we'll see, but I'm really, really curious to try it. And another thing before going into the ingredients is I kind of want to make a little agreement with you. Can we do that? I think we can. So can we just agree this is an acorn squash? I mean, I know, I'm not blind. It doesn't look anything like acorn, but I spent more than an hour going from one shop to another. I even went to a farmer's market, but I couldn't find an acorn squash. I mean, I've never seen in my life an acorn squash. I bought my second pumpkin or squash or whatever in my life. So I feel that's already a success. But as I couldn't find anything looking at least similar to that, this will have to do. I mean, it's orange, it's green, it's kind of small. It'll be okay, right? As long as we call the things the same name, right? <laughs> so let's go over the rest of the ingredients and let's get started. We're gonna need one 700 grams piece of pork tenderloin, two apples, halved, 70 grams of apricot preserves, two tablespoons of brown sugar, one and a half tablespoon of balsamic vinegar, one tablespoon of mustard, and salt and pepper. For the acorn squash, we're gonna need a one acorn squash, half lengthwise, seeded and cut into wedges, 30 grams of butter, 100 grams of brown sugar, one teaspoon of balsamic vinegar, eight leaves of fresh sage, and salt and pepper. For the celery root puree, we're gonna need a one head of celery root, peeled, washed, and cut into bite-sized pieces, some whole milk, two small cloves of garlic, peeled but not chopped, two sprigs of fresh sage, and salt and pepper. by turning on my oven to preheat to 220 degrees and by preparing two, okay, that's four, two baking sheets at the same time. Like, how cool is that? My oven doesn't have two baking sheets, so that's already fancy for me. And I will prepare them by lining them with some aluminum foil. One will be for the squash, acorn squash, and the apples, and the other one for the pork for the pork and that one I will additionally spray with some non-stick cooking spray so that the meat wouldn't stick. The first 
briefest and only stop near the stove in this recipe to make this apricot glaze which I will brush all over the top of the meat so to this tiny pot I will add the apricot preserves the balsamic vinegar mustard I'm gonna season everything with salt and pepper Ooh, that's totally pepper I just moved it from there oh well uh, so I'm gonna season everything with salt and pepper and then over medium heat I'm gonna cook it for just a couple of minutes or until everything combines and becomes a little bit runnier and looser than it is right now nonstick cooking spray and which was reserved for the meat which is here and actually now just now I realized that Laura's meat is like thin and long and it kind of occupies all the length of the baking sheet mine is short and fat but it's the same weight so it all should work out fine right so now I will add it to the baking sheet season nicely with salt and pepper because it's the only time I will be able to season it and then spread three quarters of this apricot balsamic vinegar glaze on top of it and it always bewilders me how do you calculate three quarters of a liquid? I don't know. I'm so mathemat mathematical, I like need to be precise. <laughs> anyway, so once that's done, I'm gonna put it into the oven for 40 minutes. balsamic vinegar I'm gonna season it really really well with salt and pepper and just mix to combine this is the second baking sheet for the pumpkin and the apples later and I love how I always show you where I put everything even when you don't see you can have an idea where I lay everything <laughs> so anyways this step will definitely be messier which I totally don't mind I actually quite enjoy getting my hands dirty so I'll add the pumpkin wedges to the baking sheet and then using my hands I will get pretty close and personal with it because I will take this uh, butter mixture and then just rub and smear all over each pumpkin wedge Turn and then sprinkle them with the brown sugar. Oh my god, this seems like a crazy amount of sugar. Crazy. I cannot imagine that this is a side for a main course, like, like a dessert more so. Anyways, those are my two cents on the sugar issue. So now I will cover it with some aluminum foil and put into the oven for 20 minutes. That doesn't want to close. Oh my goodness, I feel like it's sugar and aluminum foil today. wasn't the only stop by the stove oh well so here's the second one I have somewhat of a medium-sized pot here to which I'm gonna add the celery root pieces and then I'm gonna cover them with milk by about two and a half centimeters and I definitely need to go and bring my ruler for this job Ooh, I love using a ruler while cooking <laughs> I know it's funny but 
I don't know, little things I enjoy. Then I'm gonna add the two sprigs of sage and the garlic. I'm not even sure if you can see. Can you see? Oh yeah, there, you can see the garlic. I'm gonna bring everything to a boil over medium-high heat. And then once boiling, I'm gonna reduce the heat to medium-low and let it simmer for 20 minutes. minutes have passed so now I will take the rest of the glaze put it all over the top and put it back into the oven for 10 more minutes you want to let your meat rest for 10 minutes or so before slicing uh, so that all the juices would stay inside and not just run out uh, but okay as I am trying this recipe for the first time and as I'm not a huge multitasker I'm actually having this a little bit earlier uh, than I'm supposed to just because of well, you know, multitasking. <laughs> so in order not to let the meat get cold, I think I'll just cover it with some aluminum foil and I think I'll be good. And as for the squash slash pumpkin, 20 minutes have passed, so now it's the time to uncover it. Add the apple cut side up, sprinkle it with the brown sugar, as if there's not enough brown sugar there, and then add a sage leaf on top of each of the pumpkin wedge, and then put everything back into the oven for 15 more minutes. Stand, so I really would know but I did check it with a fork and it is fork tender so I'm guessing it's done and 20 minutes have passed so I'm guessing for the second time it's done so now I want to drain it but I want to reserve the milk uh, because I'm gonna use some of it once I mash the celery root and I want to add some liquid uh, this will be I think really really good because well it cooked in it and it has lots of uh, nice taste from the garlic and sage and whatnot so that's why I have a bowl I will strain it here and not to the sink so I can reserve the milk okay so I actually oh I shouldn't put it like that oh man so much multitasking <laughs> so anyways uh, trying to pretend as if I'm not feeling, I want to remove now the sage leaves and then add the celery root to some kind of pot and then mash it up. You can do that with a potato masher or an immersion blender, however you make your mashed potatoes. Generally, that's what you want to use. celery root as you like to just get the consistency that you like and as this is <laughs> the very first time I'm cooking celery root I have no idea but I'm thinking if I treat this as mashed potatoes maybe then it will be easier for me so yeah that's what I'm gonna do <laughs> I don't think I like the consistency of this I will bring my blender Okay, I can do it right now, but I just wanted to say that this started looking really, really yummy. Look! And it smells pretty nice too. I'm really surprised. So now, which I should have done actually in the very beginning when I started like uh, mashing it, I should season it. So I will do it right now really, really well with salt and pepper. And now I'll 
just mix it in. Another thing I wanted to show, look how much of the milk is left. And man, do I hate this part, like the skin. Ugh. So anyways, I use like almost one pack of milk to boil this celery root and I'm not really sure. What do I do with it? I don't think it will be like tasty to just drink it. I don't know. slice up the meat and then it will be just the question of assembling everything really nicely but that's it oh my goodness okay so i feel like i need more space too small of a table this is so i have a beautiful beautiful plate and here's how it's go going to go i will just tell everything because i cannot even show everything won't fit here so i'll lay the mashed celery root towards the middle of the plate then i will put the meat on top of it kind of fan it out a little bit so that I could pour this amazing juice on top of it and then lay the pumpkin splash squash on one side. Will it fit though? Now I'm thinking maybe I need a bigger plate. Well, I will try on one side and the apples on the other and oh my goodness, will it look amazing? down for this because there's gonna be a lot of tasting and while doing that I still want you to see this beautiful view oh my goodness it's like piece of art I don't know about you but like when I look at this I cannot believe I made it I won't lie though this won't be like the hottest food just because <laughs> I'm so bad at doing more than one job at a time. I think I repeated it in this video for, I don't even know how many times. Ooh, what's that? Ooh, caramelized sugar. Oh my goodness. And you know what else I just realized? That I've never ever tasted pumpkin in my life. I mean, I made that pumpkin puree, but I haven't used it yet, so I have no idea how this tastes. I have no idea how celery root tastes like, and the only familiar thing is the meat. Well, kind of familiar. I mean, I've tried the meat before. <laughs> so, enough chatting. I'm like so ready to eat. So, what should I start with? Maybe I don't even have the apple because I feel like that's the simplest thing of them all now i don't have a knife and now i have the knife let's start with the meat shall we okay that's so cold it's really flavorful i'm so surprised I'm surprised about the salt part because I was pretty sure that I either oversalted it or it will be undersalted. Like, I don't know why. This is really yummy. Ooh, that glaze. I'm now thinking how to warm it up again. Okay, I'll think about that later. Let's try. Maybe no, I will leave this the last because I have a feeling I won't really like this celery root stuff oh the pumpkin that was so much sugar though wasn't it hmm it's not bad but what is it like i actually like it i like its texture and it's not not too sweet Man, when I was putting that sugar, I was like, oh my goodness, what will happen? I really, I really like this and it's with the main meal. <laughs> I'm like so surprised. 
Okay. Now, I won't lie, I'm a bit nervous about this because it does have a very distinctive smell. Okay. Mmm. That's definitely not mashed potatoes. But it's something interesting and not in a bad way. Recently, I remember by the dinner table we used a word interesting and whenever you use that about food here in Lithuania at least, it never means anything good. It's like, <coughs> oh, that's celery root. Okay. It's kind of so so anyways about that interesting I feel like when I sit like this I feel like I'm chatting with a friend okay I will just finish that story and I won't start any other one <laughs> I promise or at least I will try so whenever you're not really sure about the food you're like hmm that's really interesting something so different <laughs> and you can understand that the person doesn't really like it but wants to be polite so this is somewhere in the middle for me i'm still not really sure but i will try to eat it i mean i have it i will try to eat it so i really hope that this was fun and helpful i really enjoyed making it and i think uh this would be way faster if i didn't film and talk and try to explain everything and then I could actually manage to make everything at the same time and the food would be still hot <laughs> so if you like any of the components I would really suggest trying except for the celery root mashed mashed celery root I don't even know how to call it um, that's a little bit different if you don't know the taste still try it at least you'll know now I know but other than that, everything else is so cool. And it's so quick. Actually, it's really, really quick. Okay, I should, I should finish chatting. I'm like, this environment is sitting down and like just trying and I feel so comfy. Like I could just chat with you, you know? So anyways, if you want, go and check the original recipe by Laura there. The written one as always, you can find in the description box down below and both breathe Ruta breathe you're a human <laughs> in the description box down below in both American and the metric systems because I am converting every single recipe I try into the metric system as well and share with all of my metric system friends because I'm one of you I am <laughs> so anyway thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon bye